Okay, hello and thanks for attending. So uh, I'm going to talk about FFDN, which is a federation of do-it-yourself ISPs. Uh, the original talker, speaker couldn't attend, so I'm replacing him. Um, yeah, first of all, yeah, so we will have a slight shift in slides, but not much to worry. Um, as I said, we are a federation of ISPs, but these ISPs are all uh, very uh, non-commercial. They are all targeted and made for do-it-yourself. We, we want to make things ourselves to control them, to know what's going on, to not be just uh, subscribers in a big ISP. We are also voluntary driven and we try to be human-sized. That matters a lot because we aim for ISPs where people know each other, where you don't simply uh, do things because uh, someone uh, the other side of France has asked you to do it. And we want to make some network, some human network too. We have no employees, That's, uh, that helps being uh, something human. And uh, we also are net, net neutrality proponents, meaning we do our best for, to both uh, fight the bad laws which we see and to provide our subscribers with uh, everything they need for a proper internet access. Um, yeah, unfortunately, as I said, sorry. Um, that the, the map at the beginning, it shows um, ISPs which are members of FFDN. So it's the blue dots. Orange dots are related to FFDN but are not ISPs in the sense of FFDN. As you can see, we are both in Belgium and all across France. And uh, if you want, you can do on db.ffdn.org and you will have the map, the interactive map in which you can zoom, you can get details on uh, each dot and uh, with links and status for everyone. Uh, but, uh, <coughs> we started in 2011. Back then we had only seven orgs and roughly half a thousand members. Uh, and five years later we are more than four times as big. Um, we have a very strong core and very active core of 50 to 60 people. I would probably say more than that actually, but that's conservative. And uh, that doesn't count the people who are active inside the ISPs and not at the FFDN level. So even more than that. And for some background, this was started by uh, an ISP which is named FDN, 25 years ago now, and it's the oldest ISP in France which is still running, commercial or non-commercial. Uh, so, our goals when we do all of that, first we want to be an alternative to large ISPs. We don't say exactly what alternatives, that each ISP which is inside FFDN which can decide what they will do, how they will do it, which services they will offer to the members, and how they arrange for everything. Uh, one common point though is that we want to connect dark zones, which are zones mostly in the countryside with a really poor internet access or no internet access. And we try to prevent people from being kept uh, unconnected, basically. And that it's not because they are outside of a big city that they shouldn't have an internet connection. Um, we also want to decentralize uh, ISPs, meaning we have ISPs in many places and we don't want all the traffic to go through Paris, basically. Uh, we want the internet to be really decentralized as, as it was meant to be, as it was, con as, with, sorry, as it was built, and we don't want to have only a single place which, through which all the traffic goes. And at the same time, we also do that at the level of each subscriber because we promote uh, self-hosting. We make it possible for everyone to self-host by providing uh, things like static IPs, IPv4 and IPv6, uh, and the net neutrality part where we don't block traffic or discriminate traffic, meaning you can host everything you want in the, in the ISPs on your connection. Um, the last part is that we cannot simply provide a service and uh, 
provide or make software or whatever. We also have to think about the laws, especially the ones that are being applied right now. Um, we believe there are too many laws that are dangerous. So we want to fight them. And we also fight uh, what I would say a poor application of laws when people don't get enough protection what they should simply because it's simpler to do the stupid but safe things for large ISPs. Um, and we have quite a few working groups. So the first thing to remember is again that we are a federation. We do it on, um, on the federation level and each ISP still has its own task and all and whatever he wants to do. So these are the federations and not uh, each ISPs. Uh, first one is with uh, telecom regulation. Um, we have IPVT and RCEP, so Belgium in and France, national regulators. They work for something at the EU level. Uh, crap. And um, we provide them with feedback, basically, when they ask questions about how is the market doing. We tell them poorly, basically. And sometimes we also have to complain because they didn't listen to us and we have a new monopoly situation, especially in optic fiber in France. Another one is that we teach people inside the Federation. We want to share knowledge about how you make an ISP, how you run it, how you make the finance part, how you make the, as I said, uh, sysadmin, and basically everything that can be beneficial to share between the, the ISPs, we want to do it. Uh, yeah, so legal stuff, uh, fun stuff I would say because um, we have an issue that large ISPs want to save their own ass or at least their business and they don't want to protect people which is what we want to do. So we have to spend more time and to be the first ones to understand our laws, our national laws, our EU directives to be sure that we don't um, over apply or over interpret the laws. We want to do the minimum that abides by the law but still respect our members. <coughs> So the main things which we are against are data retention, interceptions, and administrative blocking. If you go to a large ISP, usually administrative blocking, they will do it just on whenever asked. Uh, we'll fight, we'll go against if we want, well, if we can. Um, but it's true that we are helped because we are not a large ISP. We are not large ISP, sorry. And usually we are not big enough to Bo to make um, our rulers bother with them, with, our, with us, sorry. Uh, Exegete is a working group uh, which, uh, so as I say, tech geeks from FFDN and low geeks from LQDN. LQDN is La Quadrature du Net. So I call them low, ge low geeks because I think they are basically trying to debug the law. It's basically taking the same approach as with software or whatever, but applied to low. Will they understand what's going on, what, uh, how it's not working, and what has to be fixed? And uh, that's basically a complaint to our court of justice, uh, try to, when it doesn't succeed, escalate it, and so on. And you get a few, few news from them um, in, uh, in the media. Uh, oh, yeah. And actually, I would say that the real way we do all of that is that we care for each other. We do whatever we can to share and to work together. We have, a, as I said, a group of 60 people or something like that. And we usually have more than, almost always, have more than a couple of people working on, on a given topic. Meaning you, you can, we can change people who work on them. We, can, we don't really burn out uh, because of that. And we always have support in the community. And since it's first day, I'm going to talk about uh, our relation to free software. Um, you must probably know why you, uh, you should use free software. So it's the no locking, the no stupid licensing schemes, and with whatever, you, you can run software for, no, for one year, but not, not more. And uh, especially the no vendor specific hardware part. Because that's some of our hardware. So it's uh, as I said, it's really community hardware. So 
Expensive can be given by uh, companies uh, which help us. So really helps um, avoiding costs. And that's another one which we can use, which is uh, quite a bit smaller, but still very efficient for PC engines, for, for instance. And uh, we can run the same things on it. That one can actually run VPN uh, at six megabytes per second, I think. Um, about the software that we use, um, yeah, once again, we are a federation. We also welcome new, new ISPs, uh, but each ISP can use the tool it wants. We don't have a specific set. We don't force a specific set. We tend to share the ones which are useful in common, but we don't force anything. Uh, we have quite a few, and um, starting for subscriber connectivity. Since we do DSL, we have a few uh, stuff like L2TP and PPPoE. And I'm not going to go through the list uh, in details, but um, the important part is that we use a lot of them. We have to authenticate users. We have to shuffle data one between sites and handle DSL lines. We also have to handle our own machines. To uh, that's part of our ISP service. We do name servers. We do uh, basically unfiltered, well, uncensored weather name servers. We have some which are open on the internet with weight limiting. Um, yeah, we will really use a lot of that. Um, and for instance, we even have to use uh, HTJ and Dolibar for our accounting parts. Um, so it's really a wide, wide split one. And once again, yeah, uh, some more projects. And I don't really talk about it, but we have radio links, which we used for the remote uh, access. Uh, lots of you open WRT, and I say ubiquity, even if it's not really completely free software usually. Um, and uh, yeah, so we also provide services for members and subscribers. So that can be emails. We host our mailing list for collaboration. We also do a lot, lot, lot of collaboration of, on Etherpod Lite. Uh, uh, sometimes I feel like we are the biggest users of Etherpod Lite uh, in the world, maybe. And um, yeah. Um, and since we are doing it yourself, one interesting part is that you can simply, if you are a member of one ISP and you are missing a service, just do it. Just come, use the machines, and in install it if you want. Um, as part of our ISPs too, we've created a few tools to help us where we had gaps. So tools to vote and Coin, for instance, which is a tool to manage members and subscriptions. Uh, as far as I remember, it's based on Django. It's quite modern and uh, can be used for pretty much any kind of uh, group with subscribers. FFDNDB is the map that we had at the beginning. It gives, us, it, it gives you um, the places where you have a local ISP and whom you should talk to when you are in a given spot or a given city. Um, we also do have Celots and Wi-Fi with me in order to be able to um, put uh, Wi-Fi antennas or other kind of wireless links across, across long distances. So for instance, to link to villages, to churches, we are going to make sure that we can see each other, each other easily, that we don't have obstacles or trees or anything. And we also go as far as uh, adopting projects which uh, are unmaintained, because for instance, for L2TPNS, we need it for DSL. Uh, it's quite uncommon, but we do need it. Um, and we also get involved into projects like Debian to make sure packages that we use are maintained and uh, everything. Uh, there's code.ffdn.org, which is, which is a GOGS in instance. Um, 
It has a number of projects you can just go there and don't worry, the color shame is only mine. It's not as ugly usually. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, sometimes we get asked if we really had to make our own ISPs. Um, and I think we really had to, and we still have to, because if you look at what an ISP can do, it can insert ads, that's especially true in, um, in the US apparently. I don't know how they stand it, but it happens. Uh, some censoring, be it uh, administrative or because the ISP doesn't like what you are looking at. And um, it also helps um, mass surveillance. We, we definitely don't want to help that. We might be um, in a position where we cannot prevent it, but at least we're not helping it. And finally, they can also hijack your traffic, redirect it to uh, advertising website when you have a domain not found and stuff like that. It's very easy, it happens all the time, as I said, especially in the US. So, uh, but also in France, uh, we have a few bad stories about each ASP, each large ISP. So, we made uh, our own. And I feel like that's uh, something uh, we have in common with, uh, with free software in general, because we do simply don't trust the, what we are given for a fee, and which we cannot see. We cannot know how it's working. So. We make our own. You can make your own too if you if you want. It's really not difficult. And um, I would say that it's also really linked to how free software and the internet have grown uh, during the past uh, two decades. Both have grown a lot, lot, and they could not have existed one without the without the other. So uh, that's it. If you have any question. Go on. So basically the question is, um, do you help uh, to create uh, smaller ISPs, well, new smaller ISPs, and how do you manage the fact that you are not going to start making an autonomous system only for 10 people? Um, it's quite simple actually, because we are definitely going to help, to we want to teach, we want uh, this to spread. And if you have a resource that you need, but which you cannot afford, or which doesn't make sense in making at first, um, then we can share it. Um, we have ISPs which don't have the AS themselves. We, they simply share someone else, or um, host VMs across uh, networks. There are some things that can be shared. And if you don't want or cannot make them yourself at first, uh, we'll share them. Is a question. Um, I'm supposing you are connected to some endpoints to, to go to the internet. Uh, how do you assure that they don't do what ISP do? Because if you link to them, you, you need some yeah. trust. So. No, that's a very good question. Um, in practice, we cannot uh, really uh, ensure that uh, our Providers for, um, for network traffic and peering won't do uh, whatever the commercial ISPs do. Um, but well, it turns out that they don't really. We might have non-perfect uh, relationships with some, but we have a stronger uh, commercial uh, agreement usually. Um, so they tend to not try to do that. Uh, but even then, our first uh, points um, to the greater internet are usually friendly uh, either uh, groups or, or companies. Um, <coughs> but in any case, at that point, uh, it's good to 
make sure that uh, you have end-to-end -end, uh, encryption and so on. Uh, blocking is unlikely to happen. Uh, and for instance, the DNS is usually not outside of one ISP's infrastructure, so that's good. Um, throttling can, but then we, yeah, it's commercial stuff. Um, and as for spying, do end-to-end -end encryption. To monitor? Yes. Um, so I'm not aware of, uh, of something that uh, checks our providers uh, are clean, um, or at least not something automated. Uh, probably the most automated thing is that people start chilling on Twitter when something goes wrong. Uh, and since we are not alone, uh, we, we won't be the only one impacted. Uh, you'll go into your companies and tons of hostings uh, and so on. So it's going to get noticed, usually. But we don't have something automated for that. Any question? <laughs> yeah? Um, what I guess is you're running mostly off X86 hardware. And did you have any problems with uh, too much traffic and um, need to fix the OS itself? Or is it no. Um, well, I'm not aware of such issues. So, uh, yeah. Um, so the question was uh, whether we were running into cases where we had too much traffic for our setups, uh, be them hardware or software. Um, so no, we don't have such issues as far as I know. Well, sometimes it happens, but uh, because some people have decided to DDoS you. Um, <coughs> but even then, it's not. Uh, I'm not aware of such issues. Uh, I'm not the one the most involved in that part of the ISPs, but uh, haven't well had uh, an issue myself. I only heard about one DDoS last year that was not very long, and not that high anyway. So, in practice, no. Yep. Um, well, uh, as far as I know, it's not by DNS, but block it, yeah. uh, and you get to choose. Uh, what happens is that uh, if you are not among the top three or four ISPs, you basically get, uh, you don't even get asked to do it. Uh, there are 1,000 ISPs registered in France, uh, more than that, actually. Uh, <laughs> they don't have to do that. Uh, our... Um, Domain blocking stuff in France is definitely a mass, um, it's only for the masses. So if you don't have 5 million subscribers, you won't get bothered by it. And if you do, well, we do what we can to get a court order to fix that. I'm not saying we would fix it, but we'd try. Uh, do you think uh, it's something interesting to put a uh, kind like a uh, canary on the uh, SFDN uh, website or to, to say there is something wrong on our network now? Interesting question. Um, FFDN probably not. Uh, sorry. Uh, should we make a canary uh, on uh, the website? Well, FFDN probably not. Uh, HISPs, that could be interesting. Um, at that point, you should ask directly the ISPs. Um, but yeah, I think it would be interesting to have something like that. Mm, yeah? Um, do you believe there should be absolutely no blocking on the internet, or are there some subjects where you're morally <coughs> obligated to block it? Um, so, uh, do we believe there should be no blocking at all, at all on the internet, um, or are there things that should be blocked? Uh, it's a good question, and my point on that is that um, it's not really ours to decide. What we uh, we already have a legal framework um, for that. We oppose the meaningless uh, extension of that, um, but we have to abide by the law. So we can um, work on it, work on making things things better, but. Uh, 
we are not fully trained to, at least in FFGN, uh, to find the best uh, balance between, the, between blocking and uh, freedom, of, freedom of pitch. All right. That's all. Thank you very much. No. Thank you. Nice. Uh, we, we, we need to run. You can talk to it later. Uh.